Ladies and gentlemen, Rob here with Deluxe Gaming, and it brings me great pleasure to reintroduce Mad Games Tycoon to the channel. You may remember that a short time ago, we did, in fact, do a short Mad Games Tycoon series. It was, however, at a time where the developers were releasing new patches that kept on destroying our save games. Now, I've been pretty seriously watching the game's development over the last few months, and even though they have still, in fact, been releasing patch after patch, they have not destroyed any save games since April. So it is my hope that the save games are relatively safe for now, which means we get to jump into this content-rich deep game dev simulation once again. For those of you out there who are unfamiliar with Mad Games Tycoon, this is a real-time game development simulation, not totally unlike Game Dev Tycoon, but Mad Games Tycoon has all that and so much more. You can not only develop games, but you can develop game engines, consoles, MMOs, and even free-to-play games, all in a Sims-like environment. It's quickly becoming the best game dev title in the genre. And with all that said, let's play some Mad Games Tycoon. I'm super stoked. Okay, we're gonna start a new game. Player name is, of course, Deluxe. And our company name, I don't know, I have no idea, I haven't given this much thought. It used to be Spiky Balls, but we gotta do something different now. So, let's go shameless, <laughs> shame, shameless, shameless, tick, <laughs> gaming. Why? I don't know. Shameless Tick Games, games, because it's a game company. There we go, Shameless Tick Games. <laughs> Company logo. I love that they've got a uh, representation of all of the old companies in here. Even even some of the ones that are still around, like EA and yeah, they have Zertech, which is like Zertech, Techsoft. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty cool that they did that. And then on the bottom, they have a representation of a whole bunch of different things. So crabs, <laughs> diamonds, uh, gas mask, skeletons, and a tick. Oh, cool. Oh, that that's great. Like rainbow tick. Oh, shameless tick games. Sh we're shameless because we'll do anything for money. <laughs> Choose country, of course, from Canada, because that's what I do. And of course, now when you pick, when you, your country also gives you a sales bonus for a certain genre of game. In this case, it's building. So that's good. That's good. Uh, we're going to be male. Game settings. Now, uh, I've disabled the tutorial, but I'm also going to disable unlock all features or enable unlock all features. Now, that's it's because it, it kind of carries you through this little tutorial thing. And the reason it does that is so that you can't go and build, uh, you know, a console gaming company right at the beginning, but it doesn't make sense. I, I prefer, or you can't even go and do research right at the beginning, which doesn't make sense. I like to have all features available to us. There's still progression in the game. It's just, and most stuff you can't do anyway. It's not like we could start a console game at the beginning because it takes millions and millions of dollars to do that. We didn't have the money to do that, but if we got the money, I'd like to be able to do that. Does that make sense? Right, okay, so let's go. <laughs> this is our character. It'd be nice if we could choose what our character looked like that'd be kind of cool i'm kind of hoping that they do that at, include that at some point uh our special feature what he's good at he's good at sprites and, no no we're he's good at i'm thinking because we chose canada we want to get good at doing things uh like we're going to build a city game so isometric 2d engine and we're going to do building as well so he's good at doing isometric 2d engines as well as building games that's pretty cool and i want him to be kind of specialized in graphics so i'm going to give him a little boost in graphics I'm going to definitely give him a boost in speed because speed's really important in this game. Even work will is important, but work will is, is, is their ability to sit at the desk and work without having to go to the staff room or the bathroom. And trust me, it's really important. <laughs> um, I'm also going to give him a little bit of game design programming. And uh, all these will go up on their own. The only one that doesn't go up on its own very quickly is... Uh, office work, but office work is only for things like marketing and customer service and stuff like that. So, um, oh, we still got one more point. Let's put it into graphics. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. He's kind of a graphics guy, right? He's, he specializes in 2D engines, which doesn't make sense, actually. If it's 2D engines, wouldn't he be more of a programmer? Yeah, let's do that. Or game design. Nah, programming. No. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, programming, because that'll give him a bonus, I think, in research, too, as well. Good. All right, so we're going to start the game on slow. Don't worry, we'll speed it up. And this is something new. You can actually choose which era you want to start in. We're going to start in 1980 because it was the beginning of the gaming area, like the computer gaming area. That was it. That's where it really began was 1980, around that time, anyway. We're going to play it on hard. I did play around with Legendary. It's not impossible. Um, but I think if we want to have a good, fun game, I think hard is the way to go. Yay! I love this game. Welcome to Bad Games Tycoon. Initially, many functions are disabled. That's not true because we enabled them all. Um, now, uh, one caveat. So this is an early access game. Now, this game has been in development for a long time. They release patches like every single week, but the game is still in early access. Do, so do expect things to change as time goes on. This is not the final release of the game, but the game, I've, I've put in a lot of time in this game already. Like it's, it's definitely playable, like hands down playable. All right, so we're gonna start off and we're gonna build ourselves 
I'm debating. So this is a, this is one of the reasons I like it unlocked. So we can build everything right at the beginning. If I wanted to build a motion capture studio and start researching motion, motion capturing, capturing, we could right off the bat. We don't have the money to do it, but I like to have that ability. Or in this case, research. Say I wanted to do some research right away, which I kind of do. I kind of want to get into research almost immediately. And I'm going to do my research like right in the center here. So we're going to do a four by three research area, add a door. And of course, we're going to add Mr. Desk because when you're when you're this awesome, because we're good, there's three different types of desks. <laughs> there is the really cheap Ikea desk or in there in, in what they say is Ineka, the limp desk. That sounds terrible. Or the vault desk. Of course, we're going to go with the vault desk. Now, there's three different flavors and they are a different price. I don't know why. I think they all provide the same bonus. So the the, the smallest one gives you a plus one bonus to t for speed. The, the medium one gives you plus three. These give you plus five. Always go with the best desks. Like there's no don't waste your time on those ones but i did i don't think there's a difference between the three different colors even though they're different prices i like the wood we're gonna go with the wood yeah okay so we built ourselves a research area which means actually we that might have been a huge mistake we're gonna have to take out a loan right away <laughs> but we'll pay it back right away i'm not getting so the last time we did we did a series on this i i was doing a series where we don't have to ever take out loans and i can totally do that um, but uh, I, th there's been so many changes to, th to this game. I just want to explore it fully, and we're going to try and do a more balanced approach to the game, as in what a typical player would 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 ha would do and experience in the game. And they would probably get into games development as well as game engines, as well as doing a little bit of everything. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to have to take out a loan in order to get our desk. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bank. This is one of the reasons I don't, one of the things I think needs to be changed and, and improved in the game. Why do I have a $500,000 credit limit? I shouldn't have 500,000. The bank shouldn't be like, here, take this bucket of money. <laughs> and it'd be like, but I'm working out of my garage and I hardly have any, that's okay. Go ahead, take it. Run, boy, run. <laughs> I'm going to borrow, I'm going to borrow 50 grand right off the bat. Whew, that's $778 in interest a month. That's okay. That's not so bad. And we're going to, uh, we're going to build our desk. Um, we'll be able to pay that back, I think, relatively quickly because um, there's eight contracts available right now, which is awesome. Contracts are a quick way to make money right at the beginning. Uh, we'll go for, I want a different color for the, the main development office. Why can't I build that? There we go. Okay, let's rotate that. And it's the middle mouse button. You just use the uh, rotate uh, using the middle mouse button. So there we go. We're going to put that right there. Why? I don't know. Just because I feel like it needs to go there. And we're going to work on some of those contracts. So I'm going to put the this thing on here, which means they will go to the automatically go to the office where they're needed. Uh, sometimes I turn it off. It depends on what's going on. But right now I just want them to go wherever the work is. So we're going to work on contracts. So they've changed how contracts work. Contracts used to be a little bit more, a little bit different. So you'd click on a contract and you'd have, say, seven weeks remaining to finish that contract. Now it's seven weeks total. In, in a couple weeks, this is going to go away. So in other words, if we start this contract that has 12 weeks remaining, this contract is going to slowly tick down. And um, even though we're working on this one until it disappears off of the list. So I go at this a little differently now. And most of these contracts are actually quite reasonable. We can totally finish it. Even though this is only five weeks remaining, 177 work points is actually nothing as long as we have the right desk and the right guy. So we're going to take this one. We're going to go for the, oh, actually we'll go for this one. There's only four weeks. We might be able to pull off getting all of these if we're quick. So let's do this. I don't know if that makes sense. So <laughs> probably not. That's okay. Salary 70, 79, 7905 to finish that. So we're going to do that right away. And away we go. I'm going to manhandle them just once and off and running. I'm going to try and keep the speed up at about speed, speed three or speed four because <laughs> it can take a long time to do some of the bigger projects. And it's a long time me just sitting here talking and, you know, nattering at you guys. So he's programming drivers for another company and done. 7,900 bucks. Contract work. And let's do the next one on the list. So there's a couple five weeks. Let's go for the five weeks. Let's do this one's 89.25. Take care of the big one just in case the other one drops off the list. So let's speed it up just a little bit. Adding copy protection to something. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Oh, sometimes he has to stop and yawn, but whatever. It's I hate that this thing's in the way of him. I can't see him as he works. Oh, uh, co contract work. And let's do. Oh, cool. This one's still here. Let's do that one. See, I'm taking care of the ones that are shorter that because they will drop off the list because it's only a certain amount of time to finish them. So take care of those and then we'll be able to do all of these contracts and then pay back our loan. We can already pay back our loan, which is great. So contract work. This is a great way to start the game. You always almost always start the game doing contract work. It is the easiest way to do this and make a little bit of money off the bat. Off the bat. Let's repay our loan right away. Done. We owe nobody money. That's fantastic. And as far as I know, our character, let's just take a quick look at something staff. 
yeah, he doesn't actually earn a wage. He might later on. I don't remember. And they might have changed that too as well. I don't know. I actually don't know. But right now, we don't actually have to pay him anything. So we actually don't owe anybody any money right now. And I like that. I like that in real life too. I wish I could do that in real life. <laughs> but right now, the bank owns me. The bank owns most people. Anyway, so contract work. Uh, let's do another... This one here. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, some of these aren't worth a lot of money. But I mean, look at how fast that is. Like, 3000 bucks for like nothing. Perfect. Contract work. There is another type of contract. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So, yep, yeah, take care of that one. Perfect. Yeah, we're just whipping through these contracts, actually. We'll almost have enough money to make our first game or engine, depending on what we want to do. So, contract work. Let's do this one. Create an intro. For, perfect for acclaim. <laughs> uh, perfect. Intro is... Dun, dun, dun. Done. Let's just pause it while I think about what our next move is going to be. So, we could make a new game. First of all, let's look at this. Let's see what's trending. So, right now, puzzle games... Puzzle and bunker games... That's, that's a terrible combination. I, puzzle games themselves, I don't even... I struggle with this. I don't think puzzle is a good trend. I, I mean, you know, what we could do is we could look up... Uh, hold on. First of all, you start off with a random assortment of topics that you can work with. So we've got Conquest, Dwarves, and Parallel Worlds. None of those, none of those would work well for puzzle games at all. So what I think what we might do is we might start off with an engine... Oh, we can't even build an engine yet. There's no features to actually research. So I guess building the research... I, I, we just learned something. Building the research area first is, is useless. So what we're going to do is we're going to develop uh, a new game. Let's go here. What were our topics again? Dwarves, Conquest, Parallel Worlds. So what if we did a dwarf subtopic conquest game? And the genre is... Arcade... An arcade dwarf conquest game using no engine, which means we get two features, which is just ASCII text. I would say tech, but it's text. And uh, target on the audience is anybody. Anybody can play our game. And this is going to be called Dwarvish. Dwarvish peons. <laughs> dwarvish peons. There we go. Um, sort of in honor of Blizzard. There we go. Dwarvish peons. And away we go. We're, we're going to build this for the PC. So PC owns 24.3% of the market right now. We could add another platform. That's another thing that gets unlocked is this. So, But it still costs money, right? So I can't, we can't afford to buy anything else. It would be nice to get the Qatari. We could take out a loan and do it. But it seems, I don't know. It's our first game. You know what? We're not going to spend any extra money, you know, if we don't have to. And we're not going to buy copy protection. We could buy copy protection for it. We have no fan letters or concepts or complete game reports because it's our first game. We have no idea what this is going to look like. I kind of know off by heart what it's going to look like. But uh, because it's an arcade game, and I know arcade games are generally more casual. They're generally beginner friendly, a little bit more atmosphere. Actually, I don't remember about this one. Atmosphere and function, I'm not sure. They're more based on game length and graphics. I'm pretty sure that's all correct. Pretty sure. And then uh, languages. What languages are we going to include? I think we'll include, we have enough money to include at least a, one or two languages. We'll just include, we'll include Chinese. I don't know why. I just like to always include ch Chinese. And I uh, will keep a nice balanced approach at this first game. And away we go. Oh, and we're also going to include PC speaker sound and ASCII text support. Because, because why not? That's, that's all we have available to us right now. So there we go. The first game usually gets built pretty quickly. Dwarvish peons. It's going to be the worst game ever. It, it, hey, but it's our first game. You know what? I remember, like, when I was younger, I used to do a little bit of game design and stuff on some older, older PCs and stuff. And it, they were fun. I, I enjoyed just silly little text games and stuff. You know, why not, right? Actually, we're doing pretty good. Actually, our graphics Dwarvish Peons is done. I don't think we even had any errors on it. So the work on this game has been, com has been completed. You can release your game now. If you would like to continue working on the game, you can move the release date and bring it to market at a later time. Do you want to publish a game now? I sure do. It looks like Defender, though. And, of course, we got 17 for gameplay, 26 for graphics, 13 for sound, 17 for technology, and one bug. There is one bug in it. And now, uh, none of the improvements, that none of this matters right now. We'll, we'll talk about that way later. That's, that's sort of a mid-game thing. And then we're going to find a publisher to release our game. So we want somebody that releases arcade games. It looks like there's only one company. So their fan base, their fan base for Kremlin's. Kremlin's fan base is mostly puzzle games. Same with uh, Pandai is skill, uh, Pygnosis, Pygnosis, Pygnosis is puzzle, Koei is puzzle, Chemco is skill, Roar is arcade games. Now the problem is they will pay us, Kremlins will pay us $7 for every copy sold, whereas Roar will only pay us 5 So I think we're actually going to go with this, these guys, even though their fan base is puzzle. 
Might be a mistake. I don't know. I don't know. We'll try it. And we got some experience. We got one star in dwarf, building dwarf games, conquest games, arcades, arcade games, and working on the personal computer. And uh, nobody else has built a game that is arcade and dwarves because it's such a weird, weird subtopic already. Ooh. Actually, that's not bad for our first game to get 30, 40%. 40%. Wow. We're going to get... 40%, that's really good. The graphics look pretty good. A little polish could go a long way. The sound is not very good. A lot more effort should have been put into it. The controls are below average to polish. <laughs> a little polish and they would be good. The gameplay is below average. They need to be a they need to be much better. The game is, has many weaknesses. Only buy if you're a hardcore fan. Wow, but we got 41%. So hey, that's not bad for our first game. Trust me, I've done way worse than that. Uh, right away, we're going to build an update for it. We're going to fix that bug because uh, because we can and we're going to add uh, a security up now here's the thing don't ever with your first few games don't ever do this and and include everything because you're wasting money because look at this our security update oh that's a bad example uh, what about campaigns no that's a bad example too wow I'm proving myself wrong here because <laughs> usually because these percentages are so low when you're dealing with you know tens uh, two percent of ten is like nothing right so um, you're probably better off just adding uh, sorry, just doing the first level of these. So in other words, just game modes, not campaigns, new objects. Now, usually you don't even get the extra point for doing that, but uh, it's a lot of money to add an extra point. We're better off doing more patches than doing that, I think. Now, they've made it so also there's something new with this game. It used to be you could only add five patches, including a bug fix to any game. Now you can actually patch as much as you want to a game. It doesn't matter. You can patch as many times as you want, but the price increases incrementally. So it can get really expensive to keep patching a game. Our first week, we sold 252 copies of Dwarvish Peons. Right on, people are enjoying it. That's great. We're gonna do no contracts available. Uh, there is another type of contract work, which we'll talk about uh, now too as well, game development contract. So other companies will hire us to build a game for them. Now they will pay us based on our performance. So in other words, they're asking us to build a puzzle game for the PC in 19 weeks and we have to at least hit 44% satisfaction on that in reviews, and they'll pay us $177,000. Now, if we get less than 44%, or it takes us longer than 19 weeks, they're gonna pay us far, far less. It's usually like 10%, so we would make 17,000 on that or something. It's ridiculous how, how little you make. But this is a great way to make money if, you're, if you've got some decent skills, but at the beginning, to even to get 37%, you have to be lucky. Yes, we did really well in this first game, but it usually doesn't happen right at the beginning because you don't have the skill to pull that off. So I think, can we, yeah, let's research. No, we're not even going to do that. Well, let's build another patch right now. It's good to get a couple patches out right away. Just uh, you know, our updates, just to show, you know, and it's, you know, people really like that too as well. When you, although this is 1980, the question is, how are people actually getting these patches? So in 1980, there was no internet. Can you imagine, first of all, a time without internet? Yes, that existed. Second week, 252, that's pretty good. Now, if, if a game company needed to patch a game or update it, they would have to send you a whole new copy or send you discs in the mail. Like in the mail, like the postman showing up at the door with discs. Can you imagine? So I don't know how updating really works and how that makes sense. Actually, we're doing very well. We've already almost sold a thousand copies of this already. That's really fantastic. Um, maybe by week three, or, or sorry by week four we might be able to go and do some research because i don't want to take out any more loans wait we don't have any little more loans right now we're we're actually debt free right now i, I we're not going to be able to stay debt free forever but i'd like to stay debt free for a little bit anyway all right so we've sold a thousand copies already actually this is going very well we oh it looks like the publisher whoever published our i think it was roan or somebody they, they did a marketing campaign and they've added some hype to the game. So this number here is very important. The higher this number, of course, the better you'll do. But the difference between zero and four is probably like 150 copies in this case. So we would be selling half of what we're selling. We actually might even profit on our first game. That would be pretty incredible. It doesn't usually happen that way. We could... So we've got a couple choices here. We could actually go and research some features and start developing our own engines, which I think is probably the best choice. Or we could go and maybe wait and dive into a new game. But I think we'll start researching some features so that we can um, uh, build, build our first engine. Now, engine development in this game is so key to making money at the beginning. It's not that you can't make money at on the video games at the beginning, um, but it's hard. It's hard. We, we're really lucky here. I think we're actually gonna make money on our first game. Crazy, crazy, and it's because they marketed it. Look at this, yeah, that it's because I think they started the marketing campaign right here. 
And we might even add another patch, uh, although it's expensive to patch and that will uh, reduce the chance of us getting actual an actual profit. Well, maybe not. I mean, the patch may actually improve sales enough that it's worth our time. Hmm, tempting, tempting indeed. But we, hmm, yeah, I don't know. We, we can afford to do a patch. We can't afford to do another game right now. Although I'm not afraid to take out a loan. I don't like taking out loans, as you can tell. But I mean, really, it's hard to make money at the beginning if you're not taking out loans. But I can't believe how well this is selling. This is crazy. Our first game, Dwarvish Peons. Who would have thought that a Dwarvish, Dwarvish Peon arcade game or, or sorry, a Dwarvish Conquest. I guess a, a Dwarvish, that actually that makes sense. A Dwarvish Conquest game? Sure, sure, why not? I'd play it, it sounds like fun. <laughs> it sounds great. I'm patching that sucker, or I'm giving it an update because it's doing so well. It's doing surprisingly well. And of course our publisher, your publisher, it's totally random if your publisher um, markets your game to as well. So I think that's one, one, one. To, now, if that gave us more than one, I would do it. But yeah, we're, it's, it's more economical to do it this way. It's only 1500 bucks for the patch. Just seeing that the, yeah, I think that's good. Let's do, let's do it. Let's do it. It's a five-star patch either way. But yeah, let's, sales are actually doing, going exceptionally well. Far better than you'd think. Crazy. Crazy. Now, uh, another thing we can do, let's take a look and see if there's anything, because we've got 72 weeks of puzzle being in the trend. So let's see what would make a good puzzle game. Agents, Apocalypse, Art. There's 150 choices here, so <laughs> there's a lot to choose from, but I'm just kind of flip through bricks. A brick puzzle game might be okay. Candy! <gasps> Candy Crush? Yes! Candy Crush! Although that's more of a skill game. No, it's a puzzle game. That's a puzzle game. I would say that's a puzzle game anyway. We're gonna build Candy Crush! Yeah! Except we're gonna call it Candy Mush. <laughs> I think. That's what we'll do. We'll call it Candy Mush. And by the time, well, I don't know if, I mean, we're going to make a profit on that game, but I mean, it's not going to be exceptional. We've, we're, we've only lost 15,000 on it. It may make game of the year, actually, for the first game that we've ever made. Surprising. Surprising. Usually, I am, <laughs> if I try to go the making games route right at the beginning, I usually suffer hard. <laughs> I learned a hard, hard, hard lesson. Usually I stick to contracts and engines at the beginning, but I, I want to play a more balanced game because I think it'd be more fun. Also, I want to keep track of who we can hire at all times um, because legendaries pop up in here all the time. Legendary people like uh, Kojima and stuff like that. Like they, they rename them, right? But they're awesome. They're so good. So just to put that, put that in perspective. So say Bjorn, Bjorn Fechner is worth 5,000 uh, bucks per month to hire. And he's a level two and he's got some, you know, relatively good skills, but... Uh, the legendaries are usually about double that, so about 10,000 bucks, and their skills are like right up here, like 70s, 80s, and 90s. So they're totally worth work looking out for. And they'll they'll happily work for a new company. So they've changed things. Uh, the way you hire people has changed. Actually, let's talk about that briefly. So uh, when you hire people, it used to be that they showed a little symbol of something that they want to see in the office before you can hire them, like a staff room with a, with a video game machine or a drink machine or a toilet or something like that. And you couldn't hire them until you actually built that object. That is, they no longer do it that way. So it's now uh, this star here. This is the minimum quality of office that they require for them to work in your office. And right now our quality of office, the office quality is six. So we could hire this guy because he's only expecting a zero. But sometimes you, there's guys here that are like 17, 18, whatever. And you have to have 17 or 18 quality of office. To improve the quality of office, of course, you add objects in your office like copiers, uh, drink machines, couches, stuff like that. You know, right? I, I, like the way, I like the new way that they do it. Wow, we are still making money on this, on this game. Crazy. Uh, the hype is still, it's right up there. Maybe we should do another patch or another update because that will keep keep that momentum going. Did, we did it for Chinese too as well. I'm just, the language packs take way too long to build and I don't quite understand what kind of benefit you get from them. Let's do one more quick patch. This might be a mistake. No, we're not going to do that. We're actually going to, oh, we can't research that out of the future. We are going to take out a loan. <laughs> yes, we're, we're taking out another loan. We're going to borrow 50,000 bucks. I, I know that's a lot of money. And we are going to develop a new engine. We're going to develop an engine optimized for puzzle games. No. No, we're going to build Candy Crush. Yes, but we have a lot of time to do that. So we're going to build the engine first. We're going to build a puzzle engine. We're going to add some features. So we just researched four color support. So we're going to include that in our engine as well as the other two. I know it's, we can, to add features to these engines, it's super, I mean, it's, it doesn't cost any more money. So um, we're going to call, I always call my engines. I rename them after what they are so that I know I can easily recognize them when other people buy our engines. So other people can 
purchase the right to use your engine and then pay you a share of the profits that they make from the game. It's uh, it's actually one of the best ways to make money in the game. And even though this game has changed a lot over time, I think this still holds true. So it'll cost them $15,000 to buy the rights to use it, as well as uh, give you 20% of whatever they earn on the game in profit. So they, if they don't profit, then they don't have to give you any money. But uh, most people profit on their games, aside from me. <laughs> I don't often profit on my game. So yeah, we're going to build that. It costs like... I think that costs like 10,000 or 20,000 bucks. Now to add features as we do research, to add features to that, it only costs the cost of the feature. So it doesn't cost anymore. Uh, we don't have to rebuild the engine when we need to add features to it. So this is the Mad Games convention. It's kind of like E3 or PAX or something. And we can buy a booth, uh, but it's super expensive. It's something we're not even gonna look at. And when you have a booth, um, it just gives you fans. And it's actually great. It's great. The more fans you have, the more you're gonna make sales, of course, right? Oh, Dwarvish Peons, it didn't, I'm glad I didn't build that uh, that last patch. It didn't quite make money, but it didn't lose a lot either. So I'm pretty pleased with how that went. You're like, it lost money, but it didn't do terrible. And actually for your for, for a first game, that was actually not so bad. Let's speed it up just a little bit as we build this new engine. And then we're gonna have to take out, we might have to take out another loan to build our first puzzle game. It's going to be a Candy Crush. We want to do as, the best we could possibly do here. So. Yeah, I've got to keep, on, keep an eye on features too as well because uh, there's another feature that's going to be coming up and I think it's PC Music. And what would, imagine Candy Crush without PC Music. Mind you, this is Candy Crush with a four color screen, like on, like a EG, EV, e, EVG, no, EVGA. EVGA used to be a color, it was four color, it was a four color monitor. Yeah, it was pretty terrible. <laughs> so we're going to develop a new game based on our new puzzle, our new puzzle engine. It's going to be called Candy Mush. <laughs> candy Mush. Whoops. Oh, that, that was okay, too. I like the uh, ampersand in there. All right. So Candy Mush. Target audience is everybody. Select a topic. It's going to be candy-based. Candy Conquest. Candy Dwarves. Candy Parallel Worlds. No. How about main genre? Puzzle. Because puzzle's in the trend right now. Subgenre? Skill? It's kind of a skill game. I, I guess... I guess it's probably more puzzle focused, but, and our engine is going to be our new engine that we just designed, which will allow us to include four color support. Now this is going to be for the PC. Ah, oh, man, we can't, we can't have mobiles. So we can add, we can buy a dev kit here. I think we're going to buy the Qatari because that's 20, 26% of the market owns Qatari, which is Atari, right? Obviously. So let's take out a loan. Let's take out another 50,000. That should be enough. So we're hundred thousand in debt. A lot of money to do this and it might we might be putting too much into this so we're gonna oh whoops uh remove platform we're going to buy a div kit we're gonna buy the qatari 2600 rights to build games on the 2600 so put that in here and we're going to we're we're totally out of time i know that uh well i just want to finish this part so we're gonna put everything back to center here because i'm not sure about puzzle games i very rarely build puzzle ga puzzle games in this game I'm not going to buy copy protection for now. Um, seems like an extra expense that I don't want to make. And we're going to make this Chinese support because why not? <laughs> why not? I support the Chinese. And uh, ASCII, no, four color support as well as PC speaker sound. This is our features that are included in our, oh yeah. Oh, we need more money. $67,000 to develop this. Okay, so let's add another $25,000 to our debt. And away we go. We're going to build that, but we're actually going to pause it and say goodbye. And I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Mad Games Tycoon. If you like it or have any comments, please leave them below. Also leave a thumbs up if you like this game. If you want to see more of this game, please let me know. I'm promising you five episodes. If it's a total bomb and nobody ever wants to see this game again, I will drop it after five episodes, but I promise you at least five episodes. Oh, we already got two bugs. All right, guys, take care. We'll see you later. Bye.